Yo, what's up guys, Gray here, and today we have got our draft analysis for season two of the UPA. Uh, we're back after crashing out in the quarterfinals in season one. Unfortunately, that wasn't like the best game we played by any means at all. Um, so we come back, hopefully this time we're going to do a bit better. We're going to go at least one step further. We're looking for like semi-finals at the very least, um, but hopefully we can win it. Um, as we have actually surprisingly done um, before in the past, I'm still surprised that we've won a league at all, but... Um, yeah, this season there is no G-Max. Uh, that's the one big change from last season. Um, I think JB and Dorian and Shay and uh, I think that's all the people who run this league. Um, <laughs> they decided that you know it, it's not it, it it's not worth running G-Max. They're too broken. They're just kind of nuts a little bit, and it does come down sometimes to who has the better G-Max or who has the G-Max matchup. So. Uh, yeah, no GMAX this season, just a regular draft league, which is fine because actually the other league that's running alongside this is going to be Ubers. So um, we're actually got a little bit of variance, at least. It's not just all standard draft league format. But yeah, you're going to be able to see the team right in front of you. Like, I'm not uh, going to kind of waste the people's time if you just want to see the team and carry on. Um, the team is on the screen. You can see it um, in a very nicely done GFX, if I say so myself. Um, yeah, that that's our team. If you don't want to hear about why we drafted some of the things that we drafted, then feel free to click off. But um, I'll go through kind of the team, like a little bit of an analysis, I guess, about this team. I, I'm really not great at draft analysis. I kind of pick things that I want to pick more than anything else. Uh, so I, and like they tend to find some kind of synergy. Like there'll be times where I specifically pick out pieces because they synergize with other bits, but. Um, yeah, for the most part, I kind of just pick things that I want to pick. And this was a draft where, like, the first six picks were kind of just things that I wanted to pick. And they were like, okay, this is still on the board. Why not pick it up? So, um, yeah, before we get into this, make sure to check out every coach that is in the uh, UPA this season. The links will be down in the description below. Um, some new names. I think it's like a, a literally a 50-50 split of returning coaches and new coaches. And of the new coaches, there's quite a few that I've actually never played before, and we do get to face quite a few of them on the schedule, at least like early on. So uh, yeah, make sure to check them all out, show them some love, subscribe, all that sort of thing. Um, check out their draft analysis because they probably do a much better job than I do. But yeah, let's get into this uh, draft analysis. And first off, there was 20 coaches. I believe we were like seventh. Is this the league that was seventh in the draft order? I should probably have checked this before actually uh, before <laughs> clicking on it. Uh, we were seventh. That's surprisingly good memory for me. Um, yeah, we were seventh in the draft order, which meant that realistically, the top like mons, like your Urshifu's, your Dragapults, um, your other, other broken mons, I can't think of at this point in time. Um, all the very good ones probably had already gone. Uh, Dragapult always goes first. Urshifu always goes second if it's allowed. Um, all those two switch over. Like those two are the best two. Mons in draft league format, so uh, they go very quickly. So I kind of just decided that instead of grabbing what was the best thing on the board, I wanted to grab something that I very much enjoy using, and uh, that's the one that's in the front and center. That's Victini. Uh, Victini is just phenomenal. It does everything, literally just everything. Um, I, at least like in an offensive standpoint. I think defensively it can also have a good role. Psychic Fire is not a terrible defensive typing, or not be it not the best. But base hundreds across the board is always going to be decent. Um, surprisingly bulky. Like you're very rarely going to be okoed by anything with base hundreds across the board. Um, plus, it's got some very very powerful moves to uh, go off of its base hundred attack, which um, honestly doesn't sound like a lot on paper. But if you consider that Dragapult is a top mod and its uh, base special attack is a hundred. Um, you kind of understand why Victini is also pretty good, especially because it gets arguably stronger moves than Dragapult. Um, access to V-Create, Bolt Strike, uh, Zen Headbutt is obviously not the strongest Psychic stab, but um, it does get very good moves on the physical side and on the special side. You get things like Blue Flare, you get uh, Thunderbolt, you get Glaciate, you get Psychic, Future Sight, uh, Shadow Ball, all those sort of moves. Like It gets tons of coverage, Energy Ball as well. Uh, coverage to hit everything that you could possibly want it to hit um, and also it has like a little bit of utility with things like uh, Will-O-Wisp as well but honestly you're probably going to see me running it mostly offensive um, maybe with a bit of uh, maybe an occasional defensive matchup it actually works but 
Uh, for the most part, we're going to be seeing it either choice locked or heavy duty boots, maybe weakness policy. Um, I don't know. It's, it's got so many sets that it can potentially run on an offensive standpoint that, um, honestly, with the defensive backbone we've got, I don't think we're going to need to run it defensively very often. But uh, Victini is just a fantastic Pokemon. And, uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to start on grabbing what was kind of the best thing on the board. And I felt like Clefable really worked well with Victini. Um, does give me a good defensive mon to start off my defensive core with, um, which kind of goes a bit downhill after after Clefable. I kind of got a bit carried away and realized I had no points left. But um, yeah, we grab Clefable and uh, it's fantastic all round mon. Uh, great special attacker with life orb, but can be offensive as well. Of course, we got like all the offensive pressure on our team, so Clefable may not see so much use as an offensive mon in this uh, this league, but. At the same time, it's entirely possible it could run it. It gets Cosmic Power, it gets Calm Mind for setup. Uh, Stealth Rocks, Knock Off, uh, Wish. Uh, just Heal Bell as well. It gets so much. Like It's literally the best Cleric in the game, um, in my opinion. Outside of maybe Blissey, but Blissey's very passive. Whilst Clefable can be uh, much more offensive. Uh, it gets Healing Wish as well, which could be potentially handy to uh, pick up one of our offensive Mons from being close to death and... Uh, letting them do some more work. Um, but really, Clefable, I just wanted for its amazing utility, its ability to teleport into Victini, kind of baits out the steel types, the poison types that Victini really enjoys uh, being able to click buttons against. Um, so yeah, Victini, Clefable, I felt was a really nice core to start off with. Uh, and then I just looked at what was best on the board. I looked for the best steel type, because realistically, I wanted a steel type to be able to deal with... Um, or just be able to uh, be good against things that Clefable struggles against. And uh, Excadrill really kind of fit the bill. I think Excadrill is a fantastic Pokemon. Why it's still on the board on round three, I I couldn't tell you. But I was like, yeah, I might as well pick it up. If I pick up like Gigalith later, um, if Tyranitar goes or something like that, then so be it. Like Gigalith is still a fantastic Pokemon. Um, but yeah, Excadrill is just a fantastic sand sweeper. Also really good just all round kind of utility as well. It gets Stealth Rock, it gets Rapid Spin. Um, but honestly, it's most likely going to be a offensive set, much like Victini. Its offensive abilities are much better than its utility abilities. But having that Rapid Spin actually really helps it be able to sweep outside of sand as well. Um, like a Swords Dance Rapid Spin set can pretty much sweep outside of like Choice Scarfers and stuff. There's very few things that realistically outspeed a Excadrill at plus one that isn't Choice Scarfed. So Excadrill just gave me a really strong um, a strong Steel type and Ground type um, for me to be able to kind of take advantage of uh, the, again, the Poison types and the Steel types that Clefable tends to kind of bait in. Um, but it also takes advantage of the Fire types that Clefable can bring in as well, whilst Victini struggles a little bit more with the uh, Fire types. <coughs> Uh, then we picked up Thunderous Incarnate, and uh, Thundy is something that I kind of, I looked at the board and I was like, well Zapdos obviously is, is just not going to be there, let's be honest, it's Zapdos. Um, then it was either Thundy T or Thundy I, and uh, I decided that Thundy, and, uh, Thundy I was going to be better, because it gives me a better speed tier. Um, the things that I was looking on my draft, I was like, I'm not actually getting much speed outside of Excadrill. Victini is a great choice Scarfer. Um, potential, like, Mons after that I was looking at, like Keldeo, also a good Scarf option, but I wanted to have like a, a good speed tier, as well as Prankster being able to um, being able to give me that uh, priority, like Thunder Wave and Taunt, I believe it gets Taunt, <laughs> uh, as well as like some other things, like Tailwind could be useful, I think it gets Tailwind, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, there's, there's some options that Thunder's got, I haven't actually used this since uh, NSTL, which was the first league that I was ever in. I don't believe I've used it since. So uh, I'm excited to use Thundee again. Um, it's very good physical, very good special, uh, very good speed tier as well. Uh, I think it's a, an exceptional Pokemon in Draft League format. And I'm really excited to use it. Um, it does give me something that I desperately needed, which was a good way of breaking through a bulky water. Um, granted, with Victini and Excadrill, Brute Force probably will be able to break through most bulk bulky waters. Um, especially with Clefable being able to potentially toxic things, um, potentially set up rocks for the chip. Um, yeah, Victini Excadrill could probably break through it, and they like, kind of break through each other's checks quite well. Um, but Thunder gives me a set way of just, yes, I'm going to click Thunderbolt, and you've got to worry about that, um, which means that they kind of had to be in the ground types, 
Um, hence why I picked up Keldeo in round six. Um, yeah, I picked up Keldeo round six, which is kind of nuts. Um, but it kind of forces the ground types to come um, if it didn't already with Excadrill and Victini. Um, but it also is just uh, very good at breaking through ground types should it need to, because obviously it's immune to ground type stab. Um, just gotta watch out for any potential stone edge, things like that. Um, but yeah, Thunder I was just something I wanted to draft, to be honest, and it was the best electric type, in my opinion, still on the board. And uh, it just happened to, like, honestly I just wanted an electric type to be able to uh, deal with all of the bulky waters that are around that my team was kind of already looking a little bit weak to, but not too bad. Um, it also gives me a second or a third fighting resist, and considering my next pick was Tyranitar, really wants to pick up another fighting resist. Um, but yeah, Tyranitar is a fantastic Pokemon. Um, obviously it's my mascot, but it's also like one of my favourite Pokemon to use just generally. Um, and like, when I was a kid it was one of my favourite Pokemon, but it wasn't my favourite. It wasn't until I started playing competitive that I started to really love Tyranitar more, and it became my favourite Pokemon by like quite some way. Um, it's an amazing Pokemon in terms of what it can do. It can be a defensive stealth rocker, it can be a salt vest, it can be a setup sweeper, it can have weakness policy, it can be choice bandage, it can be choice scarf, choice specs. There are just so many things you can run with Tyranitar and it's just a fantastic versatile Pokemon. Um, sure it's weak to a lot of typings, but at the same time with the uh, Sandstream plus potential assault vest on the special side, you're taking focus blast, no problem. Um, I say no problem, you're still taking a lot of damage from a Focus Blast, but all of those hits that aren't like times 4 effective are probably not doing that much damage on the special side, and it's got base 110 defense, so it's like it, it's pretty solid on the defensive side as well. Um, but honestly, like, obviously it gives the, uh, the the sand for Excadrill, but I don't see Tyranitar on this team being just a sand setter for Excadrill. It can do so much more. It can do so, so much more. If you just want a sand setter for Excadrill, go and draft like Hippowdon, Go and Draft, uh, Gigalith. Um, I think both of those are gone, in fairness. And I was like, oh, I've got to pick Tyranitar if I want a sand setter. I don't want to be stuck with Hippopotas. Um, but Tyranitar is just an incredible Pokemon. Just just such a good Pokemon. Uh, I did want a Dark type because I was becoming a little bit weak to... Um, well, a little bit weak to Ghost types. Um, Tyranitar really kind of covers that up outside of the ones that, you know, learn Focus Blast, like Gengar. But... Um, we should have ways of dealing with uh, those kind of mons, hopefully. Uh, Gengar is <laughs> extremely terrifying for my draft, but um, I did actually want to draft it myself. Unfortunately, I think it went on this round, and so I went for my, my backup pick, which was another Pokemon that really kind of uh, bullies my draft, and that is Keldeo. So uh, Keldeo we used in BBR, um, which was the first Gen 8 Wi-Fi league that I actually posted on Wi-Fi. Um, so... It came to every game, it died in every game, I'm pretty sure. I think it had like 12 deaths that season out of 12 games. Um, but on, honestly on that team, it just didn't get to show off how good it could be, uh, potentially be. I feel on a draft where I've got an electric resist firstly, or electric immunity and electric resists, <coughs> um, it can really kind of prove how good it is. Um, it's a fantastic Pokemon, great actual, uh, like decent bulk, 91 and then 90s in defense. Surprisingly bulky, um, able to take hits quite well. <clears throat> Plus the 129 in special attack uh, gives me a great special attacking option. It means that Thunderous doesn't have to be a special attacker if I bring both of them that week. Um, also Victini can be physical or special, so um, if I want to bring a physical Victini, I'm not then lacking in a special attacker. Um, Keldeo is able to fill up that role just fine. Uh, Plus uh, it gives me great momentum, so this is something that I really wanted on this team, was... Momentum options that bring in my other threats. Uh, Victini brings in things like uh, Bulky Waters, uh, potentially Bulky Darks, and... Uh, sorry, I thought I'd banging downstairs. Um, yeah, Victini brings in Bulky Waters, Bulky Darks, uh, things like that. Um, I can U-turn out on those, go into uh, my Thunderous on the Bulky Waters, I can go Caldeo on the bulking, uh, Bulky Darks. Uh, <clears throat> then you got... Clefable brings in still, uh, still poison fire types. I got Excadrill, I got Victini. I have now got Tyranitar for the fire and the still types. Uh, Thundee brings in like bulky grass, bulky ground. Um, I got Victini, I got Keldeo. You see where I'm going with this? Like everything kind of pivots quite nicely into each other. So I'm able to always keep up momentum, always be be able to bring in like another threat, and hopefully be able to just keep doing damage, keep uh, like wearing away at teams. 
to a point in which Drill can come in and just kind of sweep. That is effectively what my top six mons were there for. Um, but like that's not the end of my draft by any means. Like I did spend a lot of my budget on those mons and uh, kind of had to look into the budget area. And uh, next time I pick up Glycopod, um, Glycopod I actually used in tandem with Excadrill and Tyranitar in uh, APA Academy Season 3, I believe. Season 3? Yeah. Yeah, Season 3 was the first Gen 8 uh, quote-unquote Wi-Fi league. I unfortunately was unable to play on Wi-Fi, but the admins were good enough to say that I could play on Showdown. Um, we did have a sand core in that draft with Glycopod as well, but we had a very different rest of the draft. We had Celebi, we had Rotom Wash, we had Neuvern. Honestly, that draft was a lot of fun. Um, but we actually went 9-1, and one, and the only game we lost was a meme game against uh, Platinum Howler. Um, I wish we actually brought pretty solid memes to that game. Like, I was pretty happy with those memes. Um, so, yeah, we, we effectively went unbeaten out in like regular games for that season. Unfortunately, we lost to Vepsis in the playoffs. Um, but it is what it is. Like He had a G-Max Gengar, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> and G-Max Gengar kind of just rolls all over this team. Um, like I said, Gengar is a problem. G-Max Gengar was an even bigger problem. So, uh, yeah. Glycepod, really, really strong mon. I've uh, become more and more appreciative of it in this gen. Heavy Duty Boost definitely helps because of its ability. Um, it can set up spikes. It is just a very powerful uh, physical attacker. But 140 defense is nothing to sleep on. Even as base 90 special defense, which is pretty good bulk. Um, it can take hits pretty well. It is a bit slow, but it gets all the forms of uh, priority in... Uh, first Impression, Aqua Jet, and Sucker Punch. Um, plus it gets Ice Beam, which coming off base 60 special attack. Honestly, not the greatest, but if there's a times 4 weakness, it could potentially be good. Um, outside of that, it hits really hard with Leech Life, with Liquidation. Uh, gets close combat, I believe, in this gen. Knock off. Uh, just a generally very good mon. Um, I did use this to check a, um, a Dracovish, I believe, in APA Academy. So, uh, yeah, Glycepod can be very, very good. Um, it gave me a bug type. It gave me a second water type that was a very different water type to Keldeo, so people had to prep for uh, both of those. And I do enjoy having, like, two types being the same with two very different kind of roles. Uh, next up, I actually meant to pick up Cofagrigus on this turn. Um, however, I accidentally put Drampa in the first option and Cofagrigus as my backup. It was meant to be the other way around. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we picked up Drampa. Um, I say unfortunately, Drampa is a cool mod, I didn't want to use it, but this was way too early for Drampa. Uh, this point in the draft, I wanted to pick up Cofagogus because it gave me toxic spikes, it gave me a bulky ghost. Um, it just gave me like something of a backbone that works really nicely with Tyranitar. Um, unfortunately, yeah, it did go um, between the terms, like my next two turns. So unfortunately, we pick up Drampa this early on. Drampa is something that I've wanted to use. I don't have a dragon type to this point. And I didn't have a normal type to this point, so I thought um, I'd give myself a ghost um, a ghost immunity and a uh, strong dragon type at the same time. I do enjoy low tier normal types, um, so I was kind of excited to use Drampa. I was a little bit less excited when I realized that I didn't pick up Cofagrigus, but you know, it is what it is. We can make this work. Um, yeah, so Drampa, massive special attacks that are 135 with the potential Berserk ability. Um, my team doesn't necessarily appreciate grass types too much. Um, so Sap Sipper is really nice, and we do have Cloud9, which is great, because as you can see, we have two forms of weather in Tyranitar and Abomasnow. Snow. Um, so yeah, having the ability to negate the effects of our own weather could be really handy. Um, the weather, honestly, is just here to, again, add to more chip. Um, our team being so offensive that we can kind of just keep sort of pivoting, doing a lot of damage. Uh, weather is also going to help just kind of... Uh, slowly build up over time and uh yeah drampa i just thought was a really nice kind of pokemon it gives me another defogger because my current removal <laughs> options jeez <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um yeah my defog options at this point was uh thunderous and then rapid spin on excadrill so um give myself a bulky uh defogger that's not one of my offensive mons would be absolutely fantastic um, it also gives me just like a bulky dragon type, which is always really nice. And uh, yeah, not to mention it's a great anti-trick room mon, because currently my team did look a little bit susceptible to trick room. Um, outside of Glycopod, I didn't really any have anything that's necessarily slow. Um, plus, um, trick room is a good way of countering sand. So I really want to have Drampa just to counter potential trick room. It's going to be probably quicker than most trick room um, abusers, but at the same time, it's able to be slower than like half the draft will be. 
So, yeah, Trampa looks really nice on this draft. Um, then we picked up a Bomber Snow. At this point, I was a little bit panicking. I'm not going to lie. But I Because I, I didn't have my Cofagrius, I was kind of looking at the uh, ghost types that were left. I was a little bit unsure on what I wanted to pick up, whether I wanted to go Runerigus or whether I wanted to go a little bit lower. Um, so I kind of just picked up a Bomber Snow whilst I was debating what else I wanted to pick up. Um, and it gives us a fantastic choice scarfer. Um, for those who didn't know in UPBA Season 1, um, I ran pretty much exclusively choice scarf of Bomber Snow and it went 10 and 0 that season. Um whilst I still had a, a Lowland Sand Slash in the background in the back, um a, a Bomber Snow did all the work. Um a Lowland Sand Slash just kind of hung out in the back. Didn't really do a lot of work. Um so yeah Bomber Snow is a great mon and this gen it only got buffed with the addition of heavy duty boots plus Aurora Veil. Um it gives me a nice screens option as well as honestly just being a good Pokemon by itself. Like it has a lot of weaknesses. It has many many weaknesses um but it's able to hit really hard with blizzards um it can have priority in ice shard as well as just having like a pretty decent move pool and this gen got like earth power it gets uh focus blast i think on the physical side it may get superpower now but i think it may also be hammer arm that's his best physical fighting type move um earthquake as well on the physical side it gets access to leech seed as well so Avomus Snow is really good for just kind of chipping things down. It's also just like generally very good. If you've watched any of Dr. Slacken's uh, UBL run, I think it was. Yeah, it was UBL. Uh, you know that Avomus Snow is actually a pretty good Pokemon. It's able to handle itself. Um, but the only issue is that we then picked up Trevenant as our next one. <clears throat> and I'm not sure how I feel about having two grass types in one team when it's not necessarily the greatest option. But um, Trevenant was something that actually... I looked at and I was intrigued as to how well it could do. Um, its bulk is alright, it's not bad. Uh, 110 attack is pretty good, um, but its moveset is actually surprisingly diverse. Like there, There's a lot of things that it can run. I'm not going to go through them because I think I've run through enough movesets and uh, I, 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 I don't want to give away every potential set that I could run. But uh, defensive is an option. Uh, with like harvest being the ability and uh, like citrus berry things like that, uh, frisk is really nice as an ability to be able to um, like check out for items and also natural cure is a good ability just as a status sponge. If I know that toxic is coming, then I can run natural cure and just switch in trevenant, switch out things like that. Um, it could also be a great choice bander with base one ten attack, um, access to wood hammer, horn leech, and uh, poltergeist this gen. I don't believe it gets Shadow Sneak, but it does get Sucker Punch, if I'm remembering rightly. So it has some options. It could be a really good mon, it could be terrible. I guess we're going to find out. Uh, and then I just had like four points left, and it just seemed to make sense that I picked up Stoutland. It does make my team incredibly weak to fighting, and this is the issue that I've currently got, is that uh, my fighting resists don't necessarily appreciate fire types too much, and though my team isn't necessarily all too weak to fire types like my top mons don't really care too much about fire types there's certain ones that can cause me problems but uh stoutland obviously being a sand rush mon um also has access to scrappy so it can um hit ghost types if needs be um intimidate is really nice if i want to run a defensive set because his bulk is actually pretty reasonable with 85 90 90 and uh base 80 gives me a nice speed tier where um i can run it between excadrill and tyranitar because i do have a pretty big gap there um, I can actually run this and kind of cover that middle gap, middle ground. Uh, 110 attack is obviously pretty decent, again, for choice banded. And it would be a normal type, it gets tons of coverage. So, uh, yeah, it, you might see a couple of trades. I don't know, I'm still making my mind up. So if I want to trade a couple of things away just to, you know, help a little bit with that fighting weakness that I've developed. Like, three of my last four mons are weak to fighting, and when you got Tyranitar, Excadrill, it's not ideal, but... Um, we should be able to make it work regardless because we're not bringing like all of those fighting I mean, uh, fighting weaknesses in one go. So uh, yeah, I don't think it'll be as big of an issue as I think it might be looking on paper, but we'll see. Um, if it does become an issue, then we'll make some trades, but uh, that's going to be our team for the UPA this season. Um, I'm very excited to use a lot of these things. Um, a lot of them I've used before, like Victini I've used multiple times, Clefable, UPBA Season 1. Um, I actually used Clefable with... Keldeo and a Bomber Snow in that season, so um, a few calls that I picked up from other leagues, I didn't even notice that, but um, yeah, that's UPBA Season 1, you've got Exeter, Tyranitar, Glycepod from APA, um, 
other than that, I think that's about it. Like things like I haven't used Stoutland, Trevenant, Drampa. Um, I've not used Thunderous really at all at this point. I wouldn't say that my first ever league was uh, <laughs> was a good example of me using it. So yeah, excited to use a lot of those mods that I haven't used before, and I'm really looking forward to using things like Victini and Sand again. Uh, Kelgio, hopefully, I can give a better showing for. But yeah, if you do enjoy the team, and please leave a like. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the entirety of the season. I believe it's a 12-week season, so it's a little bit of a longer one, whilst our other league uh, being BBL. That's going to be a little bit of a shorter one. I think that's eight weeks. So we've got one long league, one short league. Kind of works out quite nicely. It means I'm not playing playoffs at the same time like I have been, uh, where like four leagues ended up in playoffs at the same time. That was just terrible. Terrible planning on my part, not expecting to make it into playoffs for that many leagues. But uh, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. And until the next one, have a great day, guys. Peace. <laughs>